Hello yes. everyone. Today here with you all, your host Rahul Chakravarti, a traveler watercolorist, a co-founder of Jumbish. <coughs> Jumbish is a company that collaborates creativity and technology together. That opens up earning opportunities for the artist. Artist. We have discovered, we have discovered a microchip called Jumbish Digital Authentication Tag. tag that provides authentication and provenance to the artworks. To know more about Jumbish, please log in to www.jumbish.in. Jumbish Me and the Master yeah. is an initiative of Jumbish creations that aimed at showcasing the diverse nature of the art industry. It has been an amazing opportunity to host some of the great achievers in the field of art and some who are in the making. Today, we have with us Avijit Roy from India as a master artist. Master artist. Avijit Roy born in West Bengal. He graduated from Ravindra Bharti University, Bharti West Bengal. University. Did post diploma in graphics, filmmaking from faculty of fine arts, MS University in Varoda. He has several solo shows and workshop to his credit in India, UK, Germany, and Australia. His initial works included many images of the mammoth black bull in its many manifestations. And this is the identity of Abhijit Roy style. He experimented with Shin's Kole and technique is increasingly seen in his rendering of Buddha. Welcome Abhijit sir to our show. Thank you. Next, we have with us Nicola Lorusso as a professional artist. Nicola Lorusso is an Italian artist engaged with the cross fertilization between the field of music and coding. Born in South Italy in 1988, he lived in London and Dubai and recently settled down in Milan, in Italy. With a background in architecture, Nicola developed a passion for computational design and advanced technologies. It's very sounding interesting, right? His interest lies at the convergence between art and technologies, human, artificial, and analog and digital. Ciao, Nicola. Welcome to Jumbish Me and the Master Show. Hello, everyone. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Our upcoming artist for today is Dev Mehta from Mumbai, India. Dev is a self-taught artist. He is the youngest panelist we have ever had in our show. At this very young age, he has already presented four solo exhibitions. Dev's paintings were invited by the editors to be featured in Cambridge University, Hindu Cultural Societies, Sanskar Magazine, London, UK. Chalti Ka Naam Mumbai is one of its signature work. For our audience, Dev has appeared in JMM talk show for our first season, episode 16. He is very keen to be here. So welcome Dev to our show. Hello. <laughs> thank you, Dev. So thank you all for uh, taking the time out and joining us on the show. The sh so show is divided into four segments art and career. Second would be your views matter. Third <coughs> would be rapid fire round. That would be a impromptu answer you need to be prepared with. And the fourth, it will be concluded with your artwork. You need to talk about your artwork. I would like to mention to our viewers that you can ask your queries through the comment sections, write down your query and don't forget to mention the name of the panelist name, which you have questions for, and they will revert to you. So let's start the fourth episode of this season two. Okay, my question to Aviji sir, but what is your inspiration to take art as a career field? Aviji sir, please, your inspiration. Yes. Yeah. See, art, uh, I think in every human being, inside have art, the feeling, from childhood memory to uh, when they grow up, school, college, and 
so in different areas somehow art is very important part of their life so my things is, is not also different same kind of from childhood when i started my primary school i remember in calcutta and uh, close to calcutta not exactly calcutta i am from basically krishna nagar uh, the district city uh, it is nadia district it's before calcutta that city started before calcutta 200 years before calcutta so a very old city and very a uh, cultured city and there where i studied my school that school established is 1826 that missionary christian protestant school so my art started uh, when i was in primary school uh, like you know uh, that uh, duck with eggs and few flowers or leaves like that like other people also they do so my teacher always encourage uh, she feel i do well so that was the you know uh, initial encouragement I, i think still i remember it means it's somehow it spoke to you somehow remark in your mind so from there it started but uh, like others uh, students i am also uh, okay in uh, daily day by day going through and then finally i was very much interested with athletics i was national athlete in my uh, 12th standard still uh, pre college and uh, my event was in uh, pentathlon there was javelin discus 100 meters long jump so many things and i used to practice in iwb calcutta uh, red road and ymca uh, eastern railway is uh, there they were giving chance for our exposure and i used to practice that time 8 hours in the field maidan calcutta but somehow by practicing i got my knee uh, accident uh, in that time then i was one and a half years on bed ridden then that was my uh, second choice was art and becomes the first choice of art i entered my art college and i had done i think very good job very good work every year finally i complete my art college from ravindavarti university and then uh, my journey started because before that i was thinking maybe realistic work and landscape and all these things like calcutta artist you know uh that is the only art and good things and so when i started then my teachers there was uh, ganesh halui and other chitranjan das uh, my very favorite teacher and there was so many uh, ganesh pain also and other teachers also so they asked me to go even uh, when i was studying my graduation i used to go very often uh kg subramanian's uh, place in uh, shantiniketan although he was not my direct teacher but uh, i used to go to take uh, lots of suggestion lots of help how to do what to do and about an even somnathor this two person i used to go for uh, maybe in a month once and uh, i learned so much and then when i finished my graduation they asked me to go uh, ganesh halvi specially to banasthali vidyapeet to do your fresco painting study so i had done that from there because manida had told me abhijit uh, your place is baroda you must go baroda because you can uh get the proper scope proper chances to do explore yourself so i went there and i uh, somehow i got chance 
to start doing my post graduation uh, there in uh, print making because print making is a subject uh, somehow i don't know i used to do lots of drawing lots of uh, charcoal lots of thing and print making somehow it's attract me so i went baroda join i started lithography especially lithography is my very very uh, close things very expected and i love lithography so lithography i had done big lithography means it's like six and a half feet height uh, 14 color impression is there on stone and in baroda when i was doing my lithography i used to do because print making there is different different discipline uh, subject like uh, etching woodcut and serigraphy other things but lithography is uh, for every artist they choose one medium i was so lithography and lithography i had done at least 1000 work in my study period so that is quite a uh, good number and i had done exhibitions simroza jahangir and so many and very good uh, achievement i got so in that way that lithographs and then when i went for uh, london as a communal scholar in wimbledon school of art so i studied there i learned so much and i explored from lithograph to chinkole chinkole i started beginning there uh, that time not communal scholar i was charles sole scholar after communal then i was i got uh, german government grant also i got scope to uh, even to italy so many places europe other places and then i came back india and i started my journey with lithography with chinkole and later on now i had just finished my uh, research work doctorate on chinkole chinkole is i'm just giving little uh, example about chinkole chinkole basically it's not a very new name chinkole when the chinese people in second century bc they used to do their paintings backdrop they prepare accordingly then they do go for gouache or sketching that kind of work so they prepare that uh, surface the chinkole is similar kind of from there then later on it was completely abolished nobody knows where it goes in 19th century france they started chinkole as a backdrop of print making maybe etching or maybe lithographs or maybe wood cut that chinkole comes chinkole is the part of print making so from that area then when i was in london i started doing as a background color some rice paper printed uh, on background on the top that main impression superimpose on that then when i came back india i started doing chinkole as a medium not chinkole as a uh, another medium with print making chinkole as a medium there was the rice paper there was the pigment and layer of rice paper stuck with another mother paper through litho press becomes your final impression or creation that is so i got binale international print binale award twice from bhopal bharat bhavan and uh, that was my uh, you can say very good uh, inspiration to continue this medium and because earlier it was contradiction lots of people they were in my calcutta friend or in within delhi where i work in gadi studio lalit kala academy people they were uh, asking me what what this chinkole and why chinkole it is like collage because you know when you go in new uh, way 
new road uh, there was lots of obstacle lots of word comes that's not uh, for you uh, it's for favor you so you have to overcome that all these things and you have you have to uh, ask them you have to tell them you have to explain them proper way what exactly why i am doing what what kind of but first your image your creation then these all things it comes together then finally people also understand okay this is the medium or this way you are way of working and finally your ultimate image is coming visual yes so, so that way my ching cool is that yeah so i understand that uh, uh, there are many things that you want to express about your art and your thoughts and experiences uh we'll we'll henceforth we'll uh, learn about those things from you we'll, we can hear about those things from your side sir so we are moving towards to our next uh, panelist uh, yeah. who is nicola from italy uh, i suppose our audience would love to know what has been your inspiration to become an artist nicola yeah i uh, i would say that my my path wasn't a traditional one so i haven't done like art studies and and all of all, all of those uh instead i trained as a as an architect uh, so in a way it was a bit more sort of concrete as a as a profession in a way that wasn't like too like really like, too art although there was like a component which still involved uh, yeah, like, oh, and, and yeah art in a way but then i think sort of a, a willingness to always like look for something more a sort of research that was inside me like pushed me to uh, study a bit more philosophy uh, to get into buddhism it was something like that I, i had inside that had to come out but i i thought like it wasn't enough to do this the, the things i was doing already so art in a way came at the right time uh, and was a sort of uh, freedom i would say from also from the the profession i was doing before and i and i still continue doing because uh gave me the get the freedom to express uh and research really like in a in a sort of like boundless way so uh, uh, i feel i can really step by step explore more what it means like why I, i i i consider something beautiful and 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 what there is there to it's a profound you know about an artwork uh so it, it's it's a process and i think every artwork teach teaches me something and it's it's a nice discovery i think every time so i think that's something that brought me to 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 the art world and it's fascinating i think and it's uh and it's always different and it's always uh, new right uh, yes absolutely it's a it's a revelation uh, it's a journey and it is the process that uh, during this process we reveal we we explore things so thank you for your uh, in the state in in details so a moment is all uh, it takes to know our calling and uh, there is a point every human life where they decide what they want to do in the life so they what made you sure that the art was the career of that you wanted i mean i have been starting uh, to i mean i have been painting since the age of 7 so uh, you can say that it was uh, you know uh, in born talent uh, i have never learned art never been to an art school nor a single art tuition class yet uh, so my journey began doing spiritual paintings then gradually it went to abstract uh, abstract expressionism surrealism and mixed media so i my my motto is to experiment new surfaces uh, try different things explore the variety of art uh, also try sculpturing uh, try all the possible ways to you know uh, what makes you a complete artist i'm going back to dev do you fear your art being copied when posted on social media what do you think about art forgery 
Dev, please. Uh, for me, I post uh, barely on social media about my paintings or just generally about what uh, I've been doing regarding my art field or my art career. But uh, I do not fear my paintings getting copied because uh, what what I make is something uh, people would would not imagine at that moment. Uh, of course, you 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 feel at one point that someone might do it, but uh, the way I make my painting, I feel no one can copy it. Perfect. So my question to Lorenzo: uh, Do you think copying an artist art of or style is valid? Uh, what are your views about art forgery? So I th I think the uh, anyway I think the forgery is and coping. It's anyway a form of of, uh, of flattering of appreciation of of art, and and I think that the nowadays uh, a lot of very very good paintings are inaccessible for the majority of, of us of people. And forgery can be seen as a way to have something uh, sort of original, but at a price that it's definitely not the same as uh, as um, as the original one. Of course, then when it comes to like proper forgery, like so, like piece of art, there are uh, meant to be uh, sub substituting the original one. Then it's a bit trickier, and of course, uh, I, I wouldn't be favorable to that because. Uh, you know, you don't want to have a fake Picasso in your place, you know, especially if you paid good money for that. But I think if it's legit and if it's, uh, you know, if you know that you're getting a copy, uh, it's not too bad. And actually, uh, yeah, I, I admire a lot the people that can actually make a painting look exactly like the original one. I think it's a, it's a good skill to have. Nice. Nice to hear your perspective on this. So my question to uh, our master artist, Avijit, uh, you can come out from the mute and mute yourself. Has anyone ever copied your painting? And what do you think about forgery in the art world? Uh, this is the big problem for the professional art. Because uh, nowadays I face lots of time even uh, so many big artists, uh, good artists, reputed artists, they also face, because last almost 40 years I'm in this field. And uh, from the beginning, I started work and in between there was lots of my senior uh, teachers or senior artists, they used to say uh, this copying my work here and there and this thing. But when I came in uh, Gadi studio, I remember uh, this place is uh, certain people. They are not capable to think about, but they are by skilled is good. So many artists, uh, younger artists or mid-age artists, or uh, there is no age but And they feel if somebody's work is in professional field, good reputation and market is well, they started copying you uh, very well. So social media is another uh, very good things for our uh, explanation or our journey to show other people introduction and so many things we can get from that positive side. But negative side is another thing from social media. This kind of art uh, craft people, I, I don't say they, they are artists, they copied your work and they sell. Maybe I'm just giving example, uh, one of my uh, bull, like I do my bronze, see, this is my bronze bull. Uh, this is a small one, uh, but I do huge uh, life size or some things. I do bronze uh, print making, painting and all this. So this work in uh, my close artists, I know them. They had copied and they had sold to my client who purchased. So they feel Avijit Roy's one small bull is one lakh rupees. 
uh, I'm getting uh, 10, 10,000 or 20,000. So they are using for their interior or so many other other places. And uh, you know, this way, uh, real creative artist exploited by this kind of people. And that is very difficult to uh, check them. Uh, I'm just telling you one story, Arpana Kaur. One day, she asked me, Je Abhijit, she came in my show in Sridharani Art Gallery. My one-man show was there. And uh, she came, she, so we are talking and these things. Then uh, somehow these things came, my bronze sculpture, they are copying and this kind of thing. So then she started, to, you know, one story I'm telling you, I went to America, New York. Somebody invited me for dinner, somebody's house. And she went there uh, for uh, getting, and they actually wanted to show her work they had purchased. And that is hanged on their drawing room. So they invited and their first motto is to show that, okay, your work is, we are having, we purchase. So, she saw that work and she is saying, uh, so they are very proud, you know, and she's saying, no, this is not my work. So they are just, uh, you know, shock. Uh, how can this is not your, your signature is there, your work is there, this is printed on your uh, catalog. Well, no, this work is in my Delhi uh, art and literature, my gallery, that is there. Uh, that is this size. Size may be approximate same, but uh, original work is there. This is copying and this is uh, not my work. Somebody copied, even signature also they had copied. So that kind of, so then uh, Arpuna Kau told me, Ji, see, what, what can you do? Because uh, I feel in my side, artists, they are the creators. So they make that kind of thousand work, but the copier, if they don't see your work, next work or third work, they will not copy it because their mind is blank. So they just see and they just copy. Skilled, they are very good. So they can copy your uh, signature also. So that is the problem. But uh, when I come to know from your friend, about Jambis, that uh, you are uh, preparing these uh, chips. But my question is, in that chips, uh, you can completely protect these things because in uh, because I'm facing lots of problem with these copying things. As far I don't put uh, in social media my lots of work. Maybe other gallery they have, they put these things. Problem is, if uh, in copyright theory, because I had uh, nurture lots about, I had talked with a uh, lawyer, I had talked with so many things who had uh, process, who had faced this problem earlier also. Uh, one uh, sculptor, he was in Nizamuddin East. He also faced uh, this uh, cycle something. So, and see, he died, uh, same things. He had case and so many things. Other artists also, they say, tell, uh, because this forgery is a big, it's a huge problem for a creative field. Not only art, other things, but artist, as an artist, we can say. And that should be protected because our copyright theory is like that. If you do, okay, my right hand, left hand, uh, on right hand, if I have one rose, uh, that painting, if I do, so that copier, they will do, okay, maybe rose is red rose. Uh, that's one uh, uh, red rose, maybe little color different. Maybe in on right hand, left hand is there. Maybe some scratch is there. So that is different in copyright. So you cannot uh, tell them, oh, this is exactly same things. So I had discussed. So this is a big problem because... Uh, I had discussed with K.K. Chakravarti. K.K. Chakravarti was chairman of Lalit Kala Academy. He was the senior ICE officer and he had done lots of this kind of things in when he was in uh, MP. Uh, education, uh, even uh, 
that medical education scam, he had done lots of uh, work. So I had discussed when he was in Lalit Kala chairman, uh, Jay, this is the problem we are facing. So how you, he told me, Abhijit, this is basic problem in Indian law. And in that law, they just somehow make something, something just one stroke is little bit different that you cannot, if you don't uh, find that, you, you just neglect that thing. Okay, but they might one stroke in somewhere in corner painting, they will put and they will say, no, this is, this stroke is not their original work. This is different work. That way, somehow they excuse true, and true. they go out. Chakravarti told me, Keke Chakravarti, your idea, your uh, what what you wanted to say through your painting or thing, that also uh, get the copyright. Uh, that you you can face that you can uh, oppose that. That is there, but things is in our country is not possible. That for that I think oh, we all should think how it can be because uh, as a professional artist, I'm telling you, uh, I face lots problem. I think other artists also they faces, but uh, I take it in positive way. Like Nicola told me, told about okay, maybe uh, it will be uh, you are the good artist, so other people inspire you and they copied your work. That is okay, fine. That is the another way escape. You know, copying something, it's very difficult because your work creation, somebody copied and somebody front of you or just behind you, they sell one of 10th or one of 100th price. Like uh, if it was lax, uh, there is a 10,000 or 5,000 they sell. And then, you know, professional artists, it's a very difficult is. So that should how uh, I think you people can think about it can be uh, solved. This yes. problem can we, solve. Uh, with our uh, JDAT, we are going to solve this uh, uh, issue uh, for a larger extent that we are expecting. And uh, we'll discuss about that in, in thorough uh, in the later part. Uh, so thank you, Abhijit sir, for your valuable answer. Well, it's time for a quick break. Let me go and grab my chai. We'll be right back. <laughs> 